This is five on your side at five, focused on you. Right now, a nationwide strike looms as auto workers across the country await negotiations from three major automakers. Members of the United Auto Workers Union are threatening to go on strike this week if their demands aren't met. Today, GM workers at the Wentzville plant rallied ahead of the deadline that's just four days away. Thank you for being here. I'm Brent Solomon. Mike Bush has the night off. Our Diamond Palmer went out to St. Charles County for this afternoon's rally. We're going to check in with her now. Diamond, what are they demanding exactly? Well, Brent, UAW workers are demanding better pay and benefits. Currently, workers are only eligible for a 6% raise, and there's no pension and retirement plan for when people stop working. People rallying today tell me more than anything, Jake, they just want a sustainable workplace environment created. No contract. No, no peace. peace. No, no contract. No peace. Better pay, benefits, and working conditions. That's what United Auto Workers are demanding, or else a strike will happen Thursday. To have three companies make a quarter of a billion dollars in the last 10 years and act like they can't afford anything, it's, it's ridiculous. UAW Local 2250 in Wentzville held a rally Sunday to let people know they're serious. The labor union is negotiating with three companies, including Ford, General Motors, and Chrysler, who owns Stellantis. The latest movement was on Thursday when GM made a counter proposal with a 10% wage hike. Darren Gilly, a member of Local 2250, says COVID-19 exhausted working conditions. It's 90 degrees in there with a mask on sweating and play to replace your mask halfway through. Those are the kind of sacrifices that the white collar people, bless their hearts, didn't have to make. Rosemary White is one of the dozens who were at Saturday's rally. She says coming together like this sets a tone for business leaders and community members. Just support, just people coming to say, OK, we understand we're behind you. The last time UAW workers had a strike was in 2019 for 40 days. Gilly says they're not afraid to do it again, especially when it comes to demanding better pay. They've eliminated retiree health care. They made an eight year wage progression. So you spend a third of your career at substandard wages. That is an unsustainable situation. United Auto Workers President Sean Fain called GM's offer insulting. Now, if there is no contract agreement met before Thursday, UAW workers will strike at 11.59 p.m. Workers will not get their usual pay, but instead they'll receive strike pay. If the strike happens, economists predict that dwindling car inventory could increase the price of cars at dealerships. All right, Diamond, keep us posted. As the area GM plant rallies in anticipation of a strike, some Stellantis auto workers are facing negotiations. The automaker is offering workers a wage increase of 14.5% over four years. Stellantis is the manufacturer of Chrysler, Dodge, Fiat, and Jeep. This offer is the highest offer of any of the automakers thus far, but it's still a fraction of what the union is asking. Additional proposals are expected throughout the week. Today, police identified two people found dead in Jennings yesterday. Just before one Saturday afternoon, officers found Denitris Jackson and Reginald Brandy shot to death in a car. It was at the intersection of West Florissant Avenue and Buzz Westfall Drive. The man and woman were pronounced dead at the scene. Right now, police don't know a motive. They have not identified a suspect. Tonight, the community is coming together to remember the three teens who died in a crash in University City last week. Johnny Ursery, Demetrius Ingram, and Dion Robinson crashed a car into a vacant home Wednesday morning. They were all 15 years old. Right now, a vigil is happening in Olivet. A GoFundMe has been created for each of their families. You can find that link on KSDK.com. Time now to get a check on your forecast. Weather First Meteorologist Gary Frank standing by for that. Gary, not a bad day out today. Yeah, pretty nice. A little bit warmer than the last couple of days. This is the warmest day we're experiencing over the next seven, though. So that just uh, if you thought it was a little too warm based on what we've been seeing, just know that it is going to get cooler over the next few days. We look at a couple different spots here. Uh, I want to show you what it's like as we look downtown. I mean, it's really nice. 83 degrees. We got to the mid 80s. It's still dry and the wind is really not blowing at all today. Uh, that's one thing that we've really noticed. I noticed specifically off to the northwest. Watch these storms work their way closer to us. And as they get into the state line, they start to fizzle out. And that's what I think is going to be the case. But it's all part of this disturbance, which will impact us over the next 
36 hours or so. Really nice though this evening. Light wind, 79 degrees and our sunset around 720. So we're going to continue to see pretty nice conditions tonight. But uh, 24 hours from now, there will be a little bit of a change in the form of a cold front and also bring some of that rain with it. How much of that rain can hold together from that mess out west and when we can expect our temperatures to stay in the 70s for highs ahead, Brent. All right, Gary, we'll see you then. The morning of September 11th, 2001 is a day no one can forget. 22 years ago, detectives Raymond Regioni and Robert Zajac were on the scene of the World Trade Center. As a part of NYPD's emergency service unit, the duo was not used to responding to planes hitting buildings. The tragic and infamous day cost some of their ESU team members their lives. Today, they're remembering the ones they lost. We made a promise to never forget and we can't. Outside of doing police work, that's our most important job is to take care of the families of the ones we, that we lost. It's just the way it is. It's, that's what we're supposed to do. Now, over the last 22 years, never forget has become more than just a phrase. For these detectives, it's a promise to be there for the people who lost loved ones. Today, first responders in our area came together with the community to climb the steps of Enterprise Center in honor of 9-11. The Clayton 9-11 Memorial Stair Climb is an annual event honoring the lives of the 343 firefighters, 71 police officers, and eight EMS workers who all lost their lives on September 11th. The stair climb also raises money for charities that support first responders. The money that we raise is split between two different charities. Uh, one is uh, supporting heroes. They do funeral assistance, they, um, do, and they do provide financial support. The second one is the National Fallen Firefighters Foundation, and they, uh, they uh, make memorials all across the country, as well as start scholarships. And you can donate to these groups online. There are ser several ceremonies and events honoring 9-11 tomorrow. Scott Air Force Base will hold a remembrance ceremony at 7.30 in the morning. O'Fallon, Missouri is hosting a ceremony at 8.30. And Belleville, Illinois ceremony is at 11.30 in front of Firehouse No. 4. All day tomorrow, the Missouri Community Service Commission is holding a day of service at Enterprise Center. Still ahead, an event adapted to meet athletes where they are. How a triathlon serves as both a fundraiser and a confidence boost for those who participate. And it's World Suicide Prevention Day, the film helping raise awareness on suicide. 